God be the glory. That God arise. And uh, let his enemies be scattered. The Bible says, let them that hate him also flee yes. from him. But the Bible says and declares, but let the righteous be glad. Yes. Let them rejoice in their God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. So even in the toughest of times, we rejoice in our God, who has not left us to our own devices. So, amen. We can start our timer right now, please. Uh, God bless you this morning, and we welcome you to City Refuge Christian Center, Church of God in Christ, in the city of Enfield, where the Lord is turning things around. Is God turning things around in your life on today? My prayer, my hope is that He is. My encouragement, my encouragement for you is to embrace it and let it happen. God makes us over. He enriches us in his riches and glory in Christ Jesus that we might be prosperous. Shining examples of his glory. How many of you know we are the praise of the glory of God? We are the shining yes, yes. of the glory of God. I think about the makeup of life itself. I think about the makeup of the universe. I think about how everything in life has been put in its place. Yes, yes. Oh man, I was just admiring. Even in the tragedy, we admire God. In death and life, we admire God. I was yes. looking at some of the scientific explanations and and, and the findings and uh, the understanding we have concerning the universe in which we live. I was looking at the coverage on the, the Titan sub submersible and uh, listening to the scientific approach to actually what happened during the implosion and what causes it. And I began to think and I asked the question, and then I went and did the research. Sometimes you got to go and when you ask God, God will send you to the proper place. I said, now, if the pressure at that level in the water was that great, that it would implode and disintegrate a, sub, a, a, a submersible. And it'll do it to a submarine also. There was a submarine back uh, in the 60s uh, that imploded. And I guess we learned a lot from that. It was a completely, entirely full, fully equipped submarine with almost 100 people on board that, that did the same thing. It imploded, disintegrated at such a force that there was no need to even go think about recovering bodies. They were talking about um, the recovery of bodies and several of the scientists, you know, uh, admit that it's a waste of time. There are no bodies to recover. When that submersible imploded and disintegrated and when you watch the finite, the small pieces of debris that was thrown everywhere. And to think those five bodies was inside that capsule. And the only reason we see the debris is because it's a metal. The body is not a metal. And so by the body being uh, uh, organic, it just disintegrated and there's nothing for them to go down there and find. And so I ask the question, I say, well, gee, Lord, if human, if, if, if life can't, you know, if we can't go that deep without being in this iron tube, 
I said, how did the fish survive? And I began to do the research. And I found out that the way God designed, the way that bodies are designed, you know, what causes the body to, to, re, to respond to the pressure is, is, is air. This in our bodies. And the composition of our bodies, well, well the scientists determined that, that the fish that can live 8, 9, 25, 30,000 feet under the earth. We're talking three miles down. They're able to survive because they can release the air out of their out of their gills. They don't have lungs. They have gills and they can release that air. And they can shut down almost completely their bodies, their liver functions, their kidney functions. You know, and, and we're talking whales. There's a whale that can live at that depth. And what that whale does, he expends all of his air out of his gills and lungs into his bloodstream and the other parts of its body where it does not, it, it, may, it creates buoyancy. It creates just the centrifugal force that a fish's body that is that is less this 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 our bodies are made a lot stronger than a lot tougher than a fish. But their bodies are designed to withstand that pressure because of how they are constructed. And they said when certain fish and and, and, and sharks uh, and swordfish, when they go down to that level. They have the ability to stop breathing for up to three hours or as long as they need to, to be at that level. And then when they come back up to the surface, their bodies take on whatever attribute it needs to survive at the top. And I said to myself, now where are the naysayers who think that, who say there is no God? Solomon said, the says in his heart there is no God. Because we're thinking about if you think about a uh, how does a Scientologist say there is a uh, intelligent being. They believe in intelligent design. They just won't admit that the intelligence comes from God. And I said we're so consumed with man and the universe and how it is constructed and the people that serve other gods they serve gods that they know did not create them you're worshiping Satan when even Satanists know that Satan did not create them and we don't even think about things like this that there are animals and beings that exist at levels under the sea that the human body, the human can't even go down there and explore uh, uh, without it being something very, very, very uh, dangerous. I'm going to be honest. I have no desire to travel down 3,000 feet into the ocean to see a shipwreck that's been down there for 112 years. I, it's just not in me to do it. Amen. I have no desire at this point in my life to get in a spaceship and go to Mars. I believe that if we serve the living God who created us here, I mean, there's nothing wrong with exploration. God called them. If God put it in their heart to do, somebody has to do it. Amen. There's nothing wrong with God created people that can explain to me. See, I'm dumb in this respect. So I have to go and refer to what the experts that have studied this stuff. Yes, yes. The first thing came to me. Well, if you got to be in an iron lung to go down in a submarine, you had to be in a submarine or something that tough. 
You know, airplanes wouldn't withstand at that level. The force, the gravity at a thousand feet below the sea is completely different than the gravity on Earth. Because on the Earth, gravity is being controlled by the sun. Air is thin. But when you go into the sea, air is thick. And it's a whole different dynamic. And I'm saying, well, while these people were so obsessed with, 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 with who created the Neanderthal and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, how this got designed and, 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 and who caused the man, who says a man has to stay a man? Who says a woman has to stay a woman? And, and, and why can't I make my, I just snap my finger and I be a Japanese? And then I thought about the life that we don't even think about, that God manages in the universe. If you got to Mars, you would realize that something had to create it. And you can't create yourself. So whoever created it had to be on the outside creating it. A car can't create itself. Listen to a preacher the other night that talked about that sweet potato pie and all the ingredients that go into mom's fantastic sweet potato pie. The milk, the potato, the sugar, you know, the, 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 all those ingredients that go into it, the bread, the crust, well, we know sweet potato pie can't do that from the inside. Somebody on the outside had to create it in order for it to be constructed. And that's the God that we serve. God created everything. And he didn't do it from the inside. He didn't do it by being a part of a rock. God wasn't a part of a fish. He wasn't a part of the sun. He created those things from the outside. If you're going to create something, you have to create it from the outside. A fish can't create its own self. And so the things we don't even think about, God designed it. Things we will never come in contact with. I don't care if there's Martians. I don't care about UFOs. I don't care about life and the other uh, 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 universes or galaxies because whatever is going on out there God put me here the promise that I have here the promise I have in the next life comes from the God of Israel and what he has prepared for us through Jesus Christ our Lord and that's fine with me so if you want to play Russian roulette, trying to, dis to, to follow the, the stupidity, the ignorance, God said, I will take, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to naught or nothing the understanding of the prudent. So while you're trying to do all of that and you die, the Lord will let you know you missed it and you're in is not going to be very pleasant. We're talking about preaching to the times in which we live. Are you with me still? Thank God for our members that are here. Thank God for you always, for my wife. Amen. And uh, thank God for those that will hear God's message, see God's message by uh, our media networks and ministry. Let's go back in our Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter number six. We were talking about this on last Sunday, but we didn't get to finish. So I just want to grab a few verses and finish today. Is that okay? Amen. Grab a few verses and finish it. Revelation chapter six 
And we're talking about the opening of the seven seals and what the Lord said you could expect if you happen to be unfortunate enough to have to be during the opening of the seals. But prior to the opening of the seals, the conditions in which would that God has put forth, there are conditions that God and God alone has, has, has determined will be before he raptures the church. So my point is this, we're living in those times. There are things that God says will take place that should not be designed to alarm you as much as encourage you to get closer to Jesus. We're not able to defeat the destiny of life. Destiny of life has been predetermined. You either embrace destiny as God has designed it, or you fight against it and you will live to see the consequence. But we can't change what God says will happen. We simply have to adjust to it based upon God's guidance. God has, he will tell us, he's going to tell us in the last day, I sent you the word and I told you what will happen. I gave you every opportunity to prepare. So the worst you see times get, that ought to draw us closer to the Lord, not drive us away from him. And so when God gets down in chapter 6, when he comes down to the last seal, he's telling us there's going to come a day when all the naysayers, angelic and human, that opposed God's truth, God says there's going to be a day of reckoning. I think in life we spend too much time, we are too consumed with what we get on the earth and not recognize who we are in the earth. We came to the earth for a purpose. God purposed in us. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So this is God's thing. And our blessing, our uh, ability to accomplish and, 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 and make a difference in life is based on our obedience to God. Everybody wants to be a superstar. But God is saying, you are a superstar if you be the best you can in the role that he has assigned you. Jesus says in all of the splendor and in and, and all of the accolades, all of the, uh, of the greatness of what John the Baptist did while he was on the earth, God says the lilies in the field were adorned arrayed greater than that. Because it is not what we appear to be to men. It's who we are in the sight of God. God validates us. Paul told the Romans in and, and, and Romans uh, chapter 14, verse 17, he said, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. He says, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And he says, if in these things thou servant Christ, it is approved of God. As long as God approves, the Bible says it's acceptable to men. God is above man. God is saying if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for man. And that's it. Amen. Thank God for a wonderful youth convention. Our bishop.
and North Carolina third jurisdiction had on last week. It was a monumental occasion. Uh, thank God for people that are busy redeeming the time. Are you redeeming the time on today? In the book of Revelation, chapter number 6, starting at verse number 12. The Bible declares, and I beheld, and this is John the Beloved, he's talking about the revelation that God gave him when he allowed him to see the opening of the seals and what transpired when the seals were opened. And he said, and I beheld when he had opened the, the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. The sky disappeared. Gone. Whew. What you see up there now, it just disappears. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. We're talking about a great reconstruction, you guys. And verse 15 says, and the kings of the earth. And this is where I want us to focus today. And the kings of the earth and the great men the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man. He says, and the kings of the earth, those in charge, the great men, those that have been perceived as the most powerful and influential in our lives on the earth. And the rich men, this is not simply to say those materially rich with money, but those that have resources, those that can determine outcomes by their influence, by their wealth, by their friends, the rich men. The chief captains, the mighty, then the sweet, then, then, then the everyday guy, the bondman, and the free man. Here's something they all had in common on that day. They all hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. And it was a terrible thing. I'll tell you why. Because after they hid themselves in caves and in mountains, then they said to the cave, they said to the mountain, you got to be in a pretty desperate place to go into a cave and a mountain to hide from something and to tell the cave and the mountain, verse 16, they said, fall on us. Who except a very desperate person would go into a cave or go into a mountain and tell the mountain, follow me and hide me from the face of him, watch this, that sit on the throne. Because at that time they will see him. And they will realize. Notice, they didn't call Satan. They didn't call the president. They didn't call the United Nations. Watch this. They didn't call Mary. They didn't call the apostles. It said they hid from him that sat on the throne. And 
My Bible tells me in the book of Acts and in the book of Revelation and in the book of Deuteronomy, among other places, that God sitteth on the throne and there is no God with him. So if you can't call Jesus, you cannot call nobody. And you know, they didn't call Jesus. You know why they didn't call Jesus? Because by now their fate has been sealed. When you breathe your last breath, went to a home going on yesterday. By the time you go to that funeral, that person's fate, their eternity is sealed. You can't call on the Lord from that from that coffin. Those men got in that submersible last week and that thing imploded Sunday morning. I said, Lord, I know we have professionals that have to work, but uh, uh, I heard my bishop say when the devil came looking for him, he was hiding in the church. Amen. I don't care what it is you're doing if you love Jesus, unless you're on vacation. You can find another day to do it than on Sunday morning. And everybody wants to say the good part for them was that this implosion happens so instantaneously that you never know. The next thing they knew, they was looking at Jesus in his glory or in his wrath. And so if they didn't have Jesus when they dropped down in the water Sunday morning, they never knew that it was coming. They did not have time to call on the name of the Lord when a million plus pounds of pressure squeezes you. It's like when you see a can a, a, a paper cup on the ground and or better still I like running over cans I know y'all gonna be like this guy give me a break but if I'm riding around in the parking lot or something and I see a can in the parking lot I like running over it number one it flattens it so that it's no longer an obstacle in people's way but I noticed when you hit that can, it said, that's it. It's gone. It's done. That's how quick it is. So when that implosion happened, they never had an opportunity. Now, per per perhaps if they recognized they were having some trouble, and they would have known that, if they, if, if they recognized that, that maybe when they lost communication or you know, something, you know, nobody was, nobody will ever know. There were no transmissions. All of a sudden, communication was lost. So there was no SOS. They, unless there's something we don't know, they didn't communicate to the circus. We're having a problem. All of a sudden, communication was lost. Now, when that happened, and I'm on that boat, these guys are scientists. They believe that everything has a scientific explanation. But I hope, because I don't know, that they had enough sense when that communication stopped to call on the name of Jesus. And I don't mean Jesus help me, which is what most people do in situations like that. If I'm on an airplane or a train and I see that train derailing. I see that ship about to sink. The, the pilot comes on and tells me the plane is going down. I might say, Lord, save the plane. Lord, is this my time? But I'll guarantee you the bulk of my prayer is going to be, Jesus, keep me near the cross. But most people, when something traumatic happens, they call on the Lord's name. Not to save their soul, but to deliver them from the calamity. But God says when this happens, 
and they hid themselves. They hid from the one person that you cannot hide from. Him that sitteth on the throne. And what else were they hiding from? This is important for us. They're not saying Jesus save us. Because at this point they decided in their life that they didn't want Jesus. They rejected Jesus. So verse 16 says that when they hid from under the rocks, in the den, they were hiding from the face of God. And the wrath of Jesus Christ, the Lamb. So they weren't saying, Lord, you're my Savior. Come on, bring me home. No, these are all you that have rejected God. And when your day comes, the Bible says, Jesus said, if you reject me on the earth, I'm going to reject you with the Father. It's a dangerous game to play to call on the Lord when you get sick and you're about to die. Now, there's one thing if God gives you time to truly repent. But when you drop down in the submarine and 3,000 feet and all of a sudden everything in the sub stops working Jesus may let you see him just so you know that he's there waiting to see you on the other side. The Lord is saying the day is acceptable time. We want to be right with God before we have to go see him. Not as we're doing it. God allows tragedy and calamity and issues in our life to draw us closer to him. The Lord says he, he demonstrates the wrath. He demonstrates the wrath to draw us to him because the love of God draws us to him to deliver us from the wrath of God. Are y'all listening to me out there? God's love is designed, he loves us enough to draw us to him to deliver us from his wrath. God is a God of wrath. We want to say God is love. No, God loves us. He is love. But God is a God of wrath. Amen. But he loves us enough that he wants to prevent us from having to see him in his wrath. Amen. So when John the Beloved is saying here in Revelation chapter 6, verse 16, he said they hid their face from him that sat on the throne and they hid from the wrath of the Lamb. It's too late now Amen. for them. We hear people all the time, God is loving, kind. God would not. If why would a loving God do this? Why would a loving God do that? I say to those people, you need to spend some time in God's word. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You try to use all this philosophy and, and, and all this common sense kind of thinking. We don't have to rely on common sense and philosophy because God has given us his word. Yeah. And he says in verse 17, on that great day of his wrath, which is to come, who shall be able to stand? Well, I'm telling you, nobody. You say, why is that, preacher? Because the scripture just told us in verse 15 that the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, Every bond man, every free man, they all hid themselves in the mountain and begged for 
of the mountains to fall on them. So the answer is, nobody can save you from the wrath of God but Jesus Christ. So I want to preach real quick now. A few minutes left. God bless you, sir. Thank you. A few minutes left. Yeah. Want to preach from the topic. Want to finish what we started last Sunday. The preaching of today must speak to the times of today. Amen. Father, preach your word in Jesus' name. Amen. When the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 and 17, he said, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord. And he said, and touch not the unclean thing. He said, and I will receive you. Yes. Talking about preaching to the times in which we live. Yes. People preaching today, they're not preaching to the times in which we live. What they're telling people is, oh, God is going to send down the latter rain. Oh, we can only do it for a night. Oh, your reward is coming. You know, give. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And it shall be given unto you. But they're not preaching to the times in which we live. What are the times in which we live? I'm glad you asked. Paul said that we're living in that time where there will be a great falling away. Yes, yes, yes. He said there was going to be a time when the Antichrist yes. would come into the earth and is here. He said there are many, many Antichrists. So the spirit of Antichrist comes into the world when in the end times, let us know that our time is near. Yes, yes. And again, I went to a home going yesterday for that young lady, and praise God she was saved. Thank God for my superintendent. Yes. Wonderful mother, wonderful family. You know what? Her rapture was yesterday. No, it was actually earlier in the week when she passed. So you can sit around waiting for Jesus to crack the sky all you want to. Everybody that's dead and gone, they are dead and gone. Their rapture has already happened. There is no time on the other side. Time as we know it doesn't exist over there. Paul said the dead in Christ will rise up first. Them that remain will be caught up. That means everybody is going up at the same time. Time as we know it does not exist. Your rapture is when you leave here. Amen. Because there's only a few people. When you think about the number of folks that have been born since Adam and Eve, there's only going to be a few people on the earth on the day the church is taken out of here. The day is now. So when Paul says, Come out from among them and be the separate, said the Lord. I, I, I wonder if some Christians perceive that scripture to mean that they should just take a safe haven somewhere. And not say anything. Just go sit back, say nothing, do nothing to address the times in which we're living in. But, but, but if they're doing that, and I know people like that. I know y'all don't, but I know people who do. I just mind my business. <laughs> well, I want to say to that person, this thinking is congruous. Or it's counterproductive to the Great Commission. Because Jesus didn't say go sit somewhere and be quiet and shut up and don't do nothing. The Great Commission said, go ye throughout yes. the whole earth, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, yes. teaching them to observe all the things that 
I said, that's what the Bible says. He also said in Luke 14 and 23, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come. That was great commission. So, so that would conflict with the view of some in the church today who somehow believe they should not engage sin at any time. Now I understand. The Bible says he that win his souls is wise. So if I see a gang fight going on out there and they got guns and knives, unless the Holy Spirit grabbed me by the collar and pull me, I may not go out there into that. But everybody will have some opportunity to talk about the goodness of Jesus and to and to elaborate with your family if nothing else, right and wrong according to God. We cannot take a blind eye to the assault that we see now being waged against holiness and godly morality. Amen. They want us to just Shut up and smile. And I've seen some pastors in churches. Amen. Where pastors have led their congregants their congregants today that if they just keep silent. You know, Paul's saying, study to be quiet and to do your own business. That was not the context in which God Paul wrote that. He was talking about being a busybody. Worrying about stuff you should not be involved in. He was not talking about the time when the devil has directly attacked the family. He's attacked the children. He has government. He owns the media. He owns the corporations. He owns the economy because Jesus gave it to him for a season. But it was not for us to get discouraged and running high, it was for us to be encouraged because we know that the church wins. I want to be hey, on the winning team. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. They give you a choice to go play on a football team that has never won or go play on one that has won five Super Bowls. You're going to the one that's, on, that's, that's had five Super Bowls. Who wants to be on a losing team? And we know God wins. So the Bible says that, that there is nothing spiritual about Christians that won't get involved nowhere. There's a ministry for everybody. I thank God for my wonderful wife. She will tell you in a minute. My first ministry as God called me was to my children. People go out there and want to tell everybody else's children what to do. Won't tell their children nothing. When you get to heaven, the Lord is going to say, you did everything you could, mother. You did everything you could, father, to get your children here. Some made it. Maybe some didn't. My prayers are all will, but God won't. God will say, it is not your fault. You did your part. Amen. We think that in some venues, the devil is hostile. I've been telling folks, uh, 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 sir, for, what, 15 years now. There's going to come a day when the Christian can't hide no more. The Christian used to go hide in a church of 20,000 people, 10,000 people. Look around here. You can't hide in here. <laughs> Not yet. The day is coming, but you can't hide in here today. That's right, and when you walk out that door, Satan has taken away your ability to hide because God is saying, you talked about Peter. Let's see what you do. That's right. You put Peter down for denying me. Say, Peter actually may have had a reason because Peter was not fully understanding what Jesus would do. And then what he perceived Jesus as, then to watch Jesus get beaten down and put on the cross, he was confused, but when he saw him rise again on the third day, Peter never feared again. Woo, yes, Lord. And we have that record. Yes. So we have to realize what Satan 
wants you to do is he wants to be ordered for us. Some people think in order to be seen as a good Christian, you just go somewhere and sound and, and don't be known. If you want to do that God thing, then go do that God thing on Sunday. And then when you leave church, leave it there. That's what people do. They leave their they leave their their allegiance to God. They leave their witness. They leave it at church until they come back to church the next time. But I just want to encourage you today that people feel like if I don't say nothing, I'll be overlooked. And 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 um, and, and they will say, well, be a good Christian because he don't bother nobody. He just said over there mind his business. And the latter is true. You will be overlooked. You will be perceived as weak. You will be perceived as fearful. And they will overrun you, which is what we are seeing today. Anytime you give in to sin, just a little bit. Help me, y'all. That's right. Go ahead, Pastor. The devil is never satisfied. That's right. The old adage they used to say, if you give the devil a ride, then next he's going to want to drive. Then he's going to take your car. We are playing right into the devil's plan. God says, I want you to go to the highways and the hedges. Yes. I want you to have the courage yes. of Jeremiah. Yes. I want you to have the courage of Micah. Yes. I want you to have the courage. You want to proclaim John the Baptist? Let's see you use some of John's courage. Yes. Are you willing? People not even worried about getting their head cut off. They don't even want nobody to talk about them. They don't want to be perceived as somebody that's against what the public wants to do while the intent is to kill our children. Don't you know, politicians think about the next election. The church thinks about the next generation. While we're sitting there trying to conserve ourselves, the devil is killing the next generation of saints. Yes, yes. Our children don't have any idea now what to believe. And the devil don't want you to not come to church. If he can't get you to stop going to church, he said, go to church. Just when you come out, shut up. And don't say anything. Just stop telling people. So we can declare that good is evil. We can declare that evil is good. And everything that's being spoken now. I don't understand how a minor focusing. A minor functioning brain can't see. We of our age. If you're 50 or older. Even 40 or older, or older, because I got children. All my children yeah. <laughs> were born during the time, so I'm gonna have to go back to 30. Yeah. That's right. We watch society change from a God-fearing yeah. society to a society that yeah. does not love Jesus. That's right. We watched it. Yes. The slaves love Jesus, but now that we are free, we have no use for him whatsoever. I'm talking about preaching to the times in which we live. You will find yourself today, if you're not careful, you will be subject to the deception. I remember I joined the military in the 70s. Yes. And I've been working on computers since then. I was working on computers when the single when there were no personal computers. If you had a computer, you was working for some large corporation, or you was working in the military uh, 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 structure. People didn't have personal computers. And now we find ourselves living in a world of complete deception. Technology now has tricked us into believing whatever they want us to believe. And they're telling our children this. They're not going to convince a 60 year old man that there is no God but they can sure convince a 6 year old yes, yes. and we're losing that fight because we're not taking the fight back to them 
And God says that's why the church is here. If you find yourself losing in your walk because you're confused about what you see and hear, go back to the foundation of God's law. Go back to what you've learned. Paul told yes, Timothy, yes. 2 Timothy 2 and 4, 14, he said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child, hey, thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Yes, yes. We around people now, our children and our grandchildren, they know we love Jesus, but we're coming to a point where we won't tell them My grandkids tell me all the time, sir. Grandpa, you getting old. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> but you know what they don't say? Oh, you're wrong. Amen. Amen. Grandpa, you're getting old, but what you're saying is right. Because God said Yes, yes. Paul said, from a child you learned the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith in Jesus Christ. My heart going out to these young folks today. We never thought we'd see a day when everything can be an illusion. This AI stuff now. Used to be if you saw it on a video, you could say, I saw him on TV making that speech. But now they've got this technology that will make you make a video that you were nowhere near. I've seen... These uh, musicians out here now, they have made their millions now on the internet through these music outlets. And now, I seen Dr. Dre the other day, and I think Tyrese and one of them, they were talking about an ice cube. They were talking about suing people that are making AI videos of them. So you can't, they used to say, believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. Now you can't believe none of what you hear and none of what you see. The only thing you can trust nowadays is the word of God because God's word is true and it won't change. The same thing it said when Paul preached it is saying it today. Yes, yes, yes. The average person above 50 or above probably never saw a day coming when we would see technology reign. The whole world is being deceived. Democrats are being deceived by CNN. Republicans are being deceived by Fox. The young folks are being deceived by TMZ because they're telling them what they want them to know and they have no way of knowing the truth. You better stay with God. He said, watch. He said, Mark the perfect man. Yes, yes. I don't care what you on there saying. I want to see what you're doing. I'm about done here now. We got to make God's law our philosophy in life. According to the Bible, there's going to come a day when the Bible and the church will be taken away. Yes, yes. Now, now for the most part, we'll be gone. When the church is raptured. But if you happen to be unfortunate enough to have to live through the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to shut down the church. And you don't have to miss the rapture. There are countries around the world right now where Christianity is illegal. They can't go in church. You open a church in China, nobody hears from you again. You go over these Muslim countries and open up the church, that's what the big fight is now between Islam and Jerusalem is because they want to distinguish the church. Then you have those people, as I finish it up here, I'm trying to help somebody here today. Y'all that are watching online, I'm trying to help you. I look in the church and these look like saved folks in here. But I'm trying to help y'all out there that's watching. You got there, there are those today who, who 
They have a need to understand everything. I don't have to understand what caused a submarine to collapse at 3,000 feet. All I need to know is if you go down there and your stuff not right, it's going to happen. Yeah. Every command and requirement of God, they need an explanation. Both my daughters got master's degrees in social work, but I tell both of them, there come a time when I'm going to stop explaining to people why as a parent you need to do the things I've asked you to do. Sometimes we just sit around and we elaborate too much. You can't reason uh, 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 educationally, academically, philosophically with these kids out here today. They got four and five and ten degrees. And don't work in none of them. But they want to be so smart. God is saying, you don't have to know every, you don't have to understand what God is trying to say in every situation. God will help us. And for you that's got to know, for you that's, that's got to understand something, you got to understand everything God tells us to do in the Bible. Well, I can only help you in these cases where God gives us an explanation. Sometimes God gives us an explanation. But the God that we serve, He's a sovereign God. Yes. He's omniscient. Yes. He's omnipresent. Yes. He's omniscient. He knows all things. Therefore, being that God is all of these things, y'all, God is not inclined to have to tell us everything that he says that we should do. He is the creator and creator of all things. God does not need to explain his every action. And even if he did, you still wouldn't understand. None of us here on the earth have to understand everything that God has told us to do. What we need to remember is what God declared through Peter. Second Peter 1 3. He said, According to his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. I need you to know on today, that's what we really need to do and know and believe that the just shall walk by faith. Your finite brain will explode if God were to even give you an imp of the knowledge that God has. So why are you stressing about it? Here's what the Lord told Isaiah. He said, just do what I'm telling you to do. And know that I'm a just and a righteous God. And that my ways are higher than your ways. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. He said, for as the rain, help me somebody, coming down, and the snow from heaven, and return it not hither, but water the earth, and make it to grow forth and bud. He said, so shall my word go and do that, that I have accomplished. So I just want to encourage you today with the few minutes that I have left, if you demand, if you just got to have an answer to why God does what he does and why God insists that we be righteous and holy, I'm going to give you the answer that the way that God gave it to Job. You see, Job, Job asked that same question in Job 31 as he was talking to his friends that were trying to get Job to see that Job you must have done something wrong. And eventually, Job started 
to buy into that foolishness. So Job asked the questions. He said, he spoke to the Lord. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Then why should I think upon a maid? He said, what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? He was saying, if I'm so good with God, why am I going through this? He said, it's not destruction to the wicked. I'm not a wicked person. He said, and the strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. He said, Death not he see my ways. Don't God know that I'm living holy as best I can. And he can count all my steps. He said, have I walked in vanity? Or if my foot has hasted to deceit, don't God see what I'm doing? He said, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity. God, you ought to know me by now. God, you know better than this. He said, if my step had turned out the way, and my heart walked away after my eyes, and if any blot had cleared my hands, he said, then God, deal with me the way you want to. But then I heard the Lord say to Job, in Job 38 and 1, he said, okay, Job, you done got beside yourself. Okay, preacher, you done got beside yourself. Okay, progressive evangelist, you done got beside yourself. Okay, life coach and motivational speakers, you done got beside yourself. Okay, preachers, you call yourself a preacher. You call yourself a pastor. I heard my leader say, if you've not read the Bible all the way through, you've got no business pastoring nothing. we got preachers today, evangelists today, pastors today, and who knows who else. And they're in leadership in the church and have never once sat down and read the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. Now, how are you going to know what God is saying? And you've not read the word of God. And if you're not reading the Bible, then your prayer certainly can't be that right. Because God's desire, his will for your life is written in his word. So God, he says to Job, the Bible says he answered Job. And he answered him out of a whirlwind. He said, okay, Job, let's be clear. I don't want you to think that this is some angel or principality. When God shows up in his presence, you're going to know that it's God. He shows up in a whirlwind. When God showed up to Moses in the burning bush, there was no doubt that Moses knew who God was. When the Lord appeared under Abraham, under Abraham in the field of Mamre on his way to Sodom, the Bible says Moses stood up. I mean, Abraham stood up and he called Sarah and said, Make some food. For I see three angels coming, and one of them looks like the Son of God. You want to know when God speaks to you. So he speaks to Job. Out of a whirlwind. And he says to Job. Like I'm saying to some of you. That are listening to all this teaching. You're listening to all this AI software. You're listening to all these talking heads on TV. You're doing everything. But picking up the book. And you better buy you a book. Because they'll change the words on you. On the internet. I see everybody reading now their Bibles. From electronic devices. Don't you know how Google can go in there anytime they want to and change your ears to an ain't. They can change your red to a blue. And you won't have no idea that it's been turned. But I want to encourage everybody here, like we did in all our churches, you better buy yourself a book. That way, if anybody changes the 
words that is going to be you when you're writing your notes. He says to Job, hey Job, here's what I want you to do. He said, who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Who do you think you're talking to? I'm the one that fashioned the moon and the stars. You're talking about creation. Now, let me tell you something. Since you want to be a man, then act like a man. We got so many people nowadays. They want to run the church. They want to pastor. They want to preach. They want to be in charge. But they won't gird up their loins like a man and be responsible. If you're going to be responsible for God's word, you've got to preach it the way God said preach it. You've got to carry it the way God says carry it. You've got to walk in it the way God said walk in it. This is why preachers and churches are so powerless. They're not walking in God's ways. They're not worshiping and serving the Lord in spirit and in truth. And the Father is saying, to the son. Why should I work through them? He's just putting on a show. He don't really love me. The only time he prays is right before he gets ready to preach. The only time he studies is when he's studying for a sermon. God said to Job, stand up, Job. Gird yourselves like a man. I'm getting ready to demand something from you. And I want you to answer me. Don't sit there and shake your head. Don't sit there and say you don't know. Because all this talking you do, doing, you must know. you got to be smarter than me. you got to have been where I've been. Because you're challenging what I say. He said to him, where were you, Job? When I laid the foundation of the earth. Come on, Job. Declare that to me. If you have any understanding, uh, he said, who laid the measures thereof? Uh, if you know, Job, uh, tell me who measured the world. Tell me who measured the earth. Uh, who has stretched forth the line on it. Uh, come on, Job. Uh, don't sit there looking bewildered. Uh, he said, whereupon uh, are the foundations thereof fastened? Uh, and who laid the cornerstone? Uh, thereof. I need an answer y'all. He said, where were you when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea with doors? When the sea goes forward, the earth is only 25% that's all of this land. 75% of the earth is water. So God says to Job, who do you think when the waves come up on the beaches and the shores and they should just rush over and cover the whole earth? He said, who do you think, Job, keeps 25% of the earth above water when the other 75% is just ocean? Who do you think puts the brake on them and calls them to rest? He said, come on, Job, and who, let me know, Job, who did these things? Come on, Job, where were you when the universe was created? Where were you when I organized the, the galaxy, when I organized the sun? He said, the sun rotates, the moon, the earth rotates 24 hours in a day. That gives us time. That gives us a day. He said the earth rotates around the sun 365 days out of the year. That gives us our year. He said, come on, Job. What causes the other stars in the galaxy to not come down and wipe the earth off? Help me, Job. You got the environmentalists talking every day about global warming. We're destroying the earth. The ozone layer is thinning. But oh, Job, I didn't see y'all take off from the earth. I see gravity still got you down here on the earth. Help me, Job. And when he got through talking, he said, moreover, Job, you need to know that who shall he contend with the Almighty uh, that instructs him? Uh, who 
whom this earth can contend with the Almighty that instructs us who, if you can cause it to rain, I'll listen to you. If you can create a moon or a star, I might listen to you. If you can cause the earth to come up out of this axis and go back down, I might listen to you. But moreover, God said to Job, shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him and that can reprove God. If you can reprove God, then I want to hear it. If you can undo what God did, I want to see it. If you've got wisdom above that that God's got, I've not seen it. If you could cure death, we would not die. Somebody help me. If you can create pure, healthy bodies all the days of our lives, then why haven't you done it? They'll try everything, but one thing they will not do, they will not exceed the God of the Bible. We got to learn how to trust in something. Yes. Yes, People believe in everything but the God of the Bible. Yes. Paul said they worship and serve the created stuff. Yes. The creature. The creature is that that is created. He says you worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Yes. But we're not deceived. And God is not mocked. I just want to encourage you today. Somebody got to preach to the times in which we live. Jesus wants us saved and sanctified. Ready for glory. Man, you don't got, you don't have no guarantee to have gray hair before the Lord take you. God don't give you no guarantee to go bald before he take you. He will wait if you force his hand right until the year that you become accountable. If you don't believe me, look at these gang members out here today. God takes them out right at the year where they become accountable themselves to God. But the Lord says he would that none would perish. That all would repent. Yes, yes. Come into repentance. Yes. And receive the grace of God. And eternal life. But I'm praying today for somebody. Jesus. Thank God for all of you. I'm praying for somebody today. Yes, that don't know Jesus. I'm praying for revival. Yes. In your heart. Revival in your home. Yes. Revival in your church, revival in your city. We pray for revival in India because we know it's coming. And we thank God for his will, his word, and his way. And no matter what happens to the believer, I encourage you. Keep running. Run the race with patience that God has set before us so that you can receive the gift, the prize. That God has waiting for you. Run on and see what the end is going to be. Father, keep and help us all. Lord, uh, hide not yourself from us. Hide not your face from us. Look beyond our faults today, God. We are yet mere people. But Lord, our hearts, our hearts are before you. Lord, we love you with a pure heart. Yes. Oh God, we are damaged by the works of our flesh, but with our heart. We love you, Lord. So look beyond our faults and see the need. Bless and keep us. Bless the sinner. Redeem the backslider. Save the sinner today. Tear down a wall of petition. God bless them that are that pass by this door every day and they don't come in. But Lord, we're going to occupy until you come because we love you. We thank you, Lord, for putting us here. God, you kept us through the pandemic. Yes. You kept us, oh God, when all the members are gone. Yes. You paid our bills, kept our doors open. Thank you, thank you. you made a way for us. 
We don't worry about who's going to show up when we come and preach your gospel. And Lord, we just love you today. We thank you, God, that you even use us. Oh, God, with all the things we've done in our lives, you could have cast us aside. But, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. And, God, we know that you love us, too. So, Lord, we pray for those that are here in the sanctuary today. God, that you will meet the need. Those that are watching online, and they are many, God, see their need. God, bring them to a place of repentance and surrender. Then, Lord, we pray for laborers for the harvest here. Yes, yes. So that, God, we can get more work done in the kingdom. And, Lord, we're going to praise you. We're going to thank you, Father, because you are our Father. We know who our Father is, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night for our Wednesday night Bible study right here.